Hey everyone, welcome back to Google Workspace Recap, where we review everything new to Workspace every week. My name is Jesse Nolan, my co-host is Steve Larson, and we're here to help you keep up. Let's talk about Next. Agendas are currently live, and some sessions are already full. So if you have not done so already, head over to the site and start putting together your agenda. Now let's talk about parties at Next. <laughs> it's numbers times, folks. If we did an exclusive Workspace After Party Lounge networking event, would you attend? I will include a link to a Google form in the show notes, or you can comment on YouTube, tweet us, basically anything other than a carrier pigeon, because that would take way too long to get to us, and I need to know numbers now so that we can decide if we are able to actually put this thing together. Steve, are you excited for next? I am. I mean, I'll be there. I uh, have not done my sessions uh, for every day yet. I think I've got my first day session selected with our part of yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, I think just for the partner uh, partner tracks at yeah. the moment uh, I need to kind of see which ones I'm going to balance between partner track sessions and public sessions so having a look at that yeah you definitely got to get in there because uh, they're filling up and yeah yeah. Well, it's it's crazy to be able to reserve coming, your spot so. online before the event, but that's that's the world we're in right now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Most of the time, you can still get in. Uh, even yeah. Though there's people people that don't show, yeah. and there's you know you're able to kind of wiggle your way in or standing room only or things like that. Right. It depends on how packed the session is. Yeah. Uh, likely anything with the word AI in it is going to go fast bet, if it hasn't yeah. already, because that's the hot button topic. Top pick. Can't yep. talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, should be a good show, though. Um, it is a little weird looking at some of the just navigating throughout the session library. Um, obviously, they have to do this, but I find they're overlapping sessions and then they don't repeat at other times. So I just straight up need to choose between which ones I want to attend, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, I've also found that unlike in previous years, I'm not able to share, not yet at least, not able to share my agenda with all of you so that I could say, hey, here's what I recommend. And uh, it does yeah. say explore expert agendas here, but there's only two of them. And quite frankly, yeah. neither of them were really all that yeah. interesting. Um, yeah. It's, I guess, industry things. One is digital transformation and regulated industries, and the other one is monetization and venture capital funding for startups, which I'm not entirely right. certain right. how that's like related to this yeah. yeah we all have the same one so it's not like it's customized to anyone <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and even on that like there's only six sessions on there when there's a lot more slots yeah. so i don't really know what's going on here um that's very highly specialized and not agendas that i would recommend honestly for <laughs> you know any track that i can think of whether it's the collaborative apps track which is workspace which is how they talk about it here so basically basically what i did folks if you want to copy me is i went on to browse by track and i clicked on productivity and collaboration apps and i just selected all the ones that seemed interesting what's new in chat what's new in drive yeah. what's happening with this well, google duet blah 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 like all of yeah. the things that were specifically related to this those are the ones pretty much that i selected and then if it was seemed not interesting to me um, or you know less relevant i hopped over into the it managers and business leaders track as well as the devops IT ops platform engineers and SREs track. Um, and I just kind of poked around to see if there's anything else. Obviously, go to the keynotes, people. Um, there's they're a lot of fun, first of all. But second of all, there's a ton of stuff that usually gets um, uh, uh, announced straight away in those. And um, you know, those those are gonna be where a lot of the big data points are are announced. And then also be looking towards some of the other ones like what's new in those are also going to be announcing new products so what's next redefining productivity with google workspace for example is hosted by aparna papu who is the gm and vp of workspace you don't want to miss that one <laughs> that's at uh, 12 15 on day one so put that in your uh, in your schedules um i can share yeah. individual right individual sessions sessions yep. so maybe i'll just that put all of the links for the ones we recommend into a, a spreadsheet or a, a, I don't know, a doc or something and share it with everybody. Yeah. Maybe that would be a little bit easier for people. Um, but yeah, those are the ones that you want to make sure that you get. And then the other ones, you know, just um, uh, basically see what's interesting. I do see actually what's new with Google Chat on here twice, which is 
on the same day. That's interesting. Nope, they're on different days. So it looks like some of them you are going to be able to see um, more than once. Specifically, what's new with Google Chat is probably going to be um, a big one that they're showing off some new features and a fresh design. Who knows if it's going to be fresh for the eagle-eyed scouts like us that are constantly watching this space and have seen a lot of the newer things um, in betas and and uh, and other announcements on other blogs and such, but. Uh, I still wouldn't recommend missing those. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little interesting about the whole, like the way the whole site works. I'm trying, you know, I'm, I'm like selecting August 31st and it says, oh, you have no sessions for this day. And then you click, yep. you know, browse session library. And I'm thinking, oh, it's just going to show me the 31st days. And no, it doesn't. It shows me all the days. I'm just like, oh, yep. I'm trying to pick my sessions for the 31st. Why are you showing me all the days <laughs> of this, you know? Yeah. conference so when you do hit my you know. agenda um once you have a couple of things slotted in there you you will have a browse sessions during the time slot that you don't have and it will show you the available sessions during that right. time slot on that um, day but when you have your days day, empty yeah. when your day's empty there's nothing the there. 31st right now it gives me sessions for every single day yeah that's silly. Pull it up, which is weird yeah so i don't know if i just have the Maybe just not much going on in the last day, I guess. Uh, yeah, and actually that was something that I was uh, thinking about or, or talking to a couple of people about actually is like, when is everyone getting there? When is everyone leaving? In the past, I have shown up day of. I've flown in early. I don't recommend it if you can manage it, if you can afford it, because it's such a hassle carrying around all your stuff. Plus, you're just worn out from the flight and you don't usually get there on time, not to mention the enormous amount of traffic getting even from the airport to the venue. Um, and it's San Francisco, so traffic is just god awful uh, to begin with. So, you know, if you can get there the night before, that's what I plan to do. And then for those of you who can, I'm sure pre people are going to be um, flying out of there at, uh, you know, two o'clock or whatever, uh, given that the last day is a half day. So, um, not a whole lot of extra time to, uh, to to play around with for our event, but I think on day two in the evening, uh, maybe we'll we'll get something going or something like that. Yeah. Or maybe day one. Depends when uh, the Google party is. Uh, it's uh, Well, I know there's one on uh, the 30th. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I don't know if it's the same one. That you're well, I will of. tell you that the Google Next official party is on Wednesday, August 30th. That's the big yeah. one. Yeah. Um, any more details than that are unknown to me totally hidden away behind locked doors and secret labs inside of Google. Um, but that's that's that one. If we're going to do an event, it'll probably end up being on Tuesday night. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's just, a welcome happy hour 5 to 6.30, so keep that in mind. I will not probably be available during those times. Yeah, yeah. That is a Google Next happy hour. Yeah. Um, and then there's an innovators thing, and then there's a partner thing, and it's, yeah. there's other vendor things, and there's there's a lot going on other than just Google Next. So yeah, if you're not aware quiet. of those things going on, you generally just want to keep your ear to the ground as you walk around the show floor, and you'll hear different vendors talking about, oh, shh, we got a party. You, you, you want to come? You want to come to our party? And one of those might be us. If you are interested in a workspace <laughs> hangout, please let me know so that I can try and hack that together. We do have a couple options on the table. Um, including with sponsors and uh, maybe some snacks or uh, cocktails and, and hors d'oeuvres or something along those lines. Um, Steve, I love your pink fingernails. Oh, yeah. I forgot about those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Barbie. Barbie movie this week with the kids. So I yeah. just glanced over and you had your hand there up on are. your chin there. And hello, pink <laughs> fingernails. Yeah, they yeah, they're still, still haven't worn off yet. Just show barely, them off and wear them barely, proud, my friend. Barely chipping off since some of the corners. <laughs> but yeah, like all the the boys had their, well, one of the twins had uh, black and pink and then the other one had all pink and I think a daughter had, you know, like pink with like polka dots or something like that. So we all, all had our nails done for a uh, uh, movie. Very, very nice. I like it. It's a good look for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to keep it until they wear, wear off, you know, until they're almost awesome. completely gone. So. 
<laughs> I think you should have them redone for Google Next. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? I, you know, I'll, do, I'll, do Google, I'll do Google Colors for Next. There you go. That? There you go. There you go. Yeah, actually, that's actually that's what I'll do. <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll get it done in you know, blue, red, green, yellow, and uh, yeah. Well, if anybody do doesn't that. know what Steve looks like <laughs> at this point, just look for the guy with the Google nails at yeah. Google Next. <laughs> that's, you know, actually, that's, that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. That's, that's a great trick. idea. That's really what, that's what I'm gonna do. That. Yep. Yeah, can I have them done for next? Yeah, I was trying to think about what I'm going to wear so that I can, you know, stand out a little bit and tell people about the show and things like that. I need to, get, got, you need to bring me a shirt so I can actually get a I've got to make new shirt. shirts. I've changed the logo three times since the last shirt. All right, all right. <laughs> I was thinking about wearing some of, the, uh, some, of the innovators, some of the innovator swag that I got, but they got us this bomber jacket, and I'm like, it's summertime in California. I'm not wearing a freaking bomber jacket. Yeah. I'll die. Like I'll just melt. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I gotta to, I gotta come up with some custom swag for us. Yeah, you had to wear your like big blue puffy uh, like developer jacket last year to get or a couple of years back to get special access to things. Oh my and, god, that uh, better not be the case yeah. this year. Yep. Did they tell you in advance, or they were just like, "Oh, surprise"? No, I think they. I think they handed them out at next, mm -hmm. and then they said, "That's what you use to get in." You know, okay, to get access. that's fine. I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. that's why I like t-shirts. It's hot out here, people. It's ninety degrees yeah. today. <laughs> it's hot elsewhere too, but it's more often hot out here. All right, do we have a show, or are we just going to schmooze we, for an hour? We could. We could. <laughs> we can talk about Steve's you know, nails some more. That. Yeah. <laughs> we do have a few pretty good updates this week actually we do we do so uh a couple good ones actually in the end of re week recap post uh that being uh the ability to set context aware access policies for first and third party applications uh to access google workspace apis uh there's uh the ability not to include audio when sharing your screen with google meet on mobile and then uh, this is actually more of a limitation than a, than a feature. It's uh, <laughs> a single Google group can be a member of 30,000 shared drives, which, you know, it's, it's a lot, uh, but before you've been limited, uh, but this now is limiting it to 30,000 only, which I think is pretty reasonable. I think, I think uh, that'll be enough. You know, <laughs> it could be enough. Yeah. I don't know who was using, who was adding a group to more than 30,000 shared drives other than for malicious purposes, I guess, but um, it's actually something I, I thought of when I was thinking of, you know, oh yeah, I've got a whole bunch of these like email groups from Google and yeah, oh yeah, if you wanted to, you know, add a whole bunch of shared drives to people's views, you just add these groups and then now thousands and thousands of people have all these shared drives are just like taking up their, you know, side panel and, um, you know, yeah. It's a good Google, thing you're not malicious. Google about it, they're like, just like, yeah. You know, we know about it. It's fine. We'll just, you know, someone reports it. We'll deal with it. That's what they said. That tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then in terms of uh, updates this week uh, that we saw uh, well, last week, uh, we saw five updates. Uh, first one is the ability to add adding line numbers to Google Docs. Uh, next is the ability to import sensitive external files to Google Drive with client-side encryption using the Drive API, uh, which is launching in beta. Yeah, again, a lot of client-side encryption releases this year. They're doing a lot of work on that. Uh, next is the ability to sync users and groups from Azure Active Directory using Directory Sync. And uh, the dis you can now disable submissions after a due date in Google Classroom. And then finally, inline replies are now available with uh, within announcement spaces in the Google Chat. Doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose? Uh, well, no, I think I think not, not really, because you know this is this aligns with what Slack has from those annou those announcement oh, channels, yeah. right? So it's only allowing people to that are authorized, you know, that are, uh, to create that initial post, and then responses can be can be done by anyone, so people can you know respond and they you know i think because you only get pinged when you are part yep. of those response threads right so it's not going to overwhelm people uh when people do those in line responses yeah i guess that makes sense yeah uh, certainly then, helpful for um what do you call it for for like announcement real notification like important right. things yeah yeah 
Uh, and then a couple items in the uh, in the news topics. Uh, there's a YouTube article about uh, a deep dive into Google Workspace security and how to make that safe and how to make safe and smart collaboration uh, a uh, I was going to it's a little bit of a long of a topic here a, um, a reality. smart collaboration reality. A reality yeah it's an event in September yeah, so you have time fifty days yeah, in fact. Kevin Abudaka, this sounds, he sounds familiar. I feel like I've seen him speak before on things. Okay. Looks familiar, sounds familiar. Um, and then Google is also working on a supercharged assistant powered by LMMs. Fucking uh, finally. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think you missed the timing on that just a little bit. I don't know if that was the purpose. But, uh, uh, we'll do it in post. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and then finally, Google, well, the next agenda is live, and we've kind of already covered that. So Yeah, we killed that one. <laughs> not much to talk about on that one there. So, yeah. Uh, first one. Uh, so then in the, the recap post is the uh, context store access uh, capabilities are expanding here to uh, to kind of set policies for first third-party app applications and their access to workspace APIs. So you'll be able to set those up on your, you know, different access levels, and um, this is, you know, extending into uh, to the APIs that request workspace core data and giving you a little bit extra layer of control over how that data is accessed. So this, uh, of course, is available to those that have access to Context Store Access Policies, uh, which will be Enterprise Standard, Enterprise Plus, Education Standard, Education Plus, and the Cloud Native Premium users there. Uh, so a little bit, uh, a couple links in the article about how to apply those and, and deploy those. So uh, have a look at that if you're interested in adding that into your uh, CAA policies. Uh, next, the uh, ability to include audio when sharing your screen using Google Meet on mobile. So that's something you've really only been able to do on a desktop, but now it is uh, giving you the ability to share video with sound or share music along with your presentation when you are on a mobile device. Uh, so that available that is going to be available uh, now on iOS devices and will be rolling out to Android devices in mid August. I don't think I've ever done that. Um, like presented from my mobile exclusively. I've done it, especially done it to the point times. of wanting to share audio. I've done it a couple times when I've wanted to have my phone as the remote for the presentation. It's a lot right. easier when you're presenting the, the presentation on your phone, like when you're standing there. Sometimes. I suppose yeah. an iPad could probably be a good use case for that as well, or, or Android tablet. Yeah. I don't know. If you're walking a stage or something, uh, the phone is just a little bit more subtle yeah. and convenient, I, I always felt. You don't have the so, clicker remote? I mean, you can. You can use I love that, those. But, you could then, but then you can't look at the screen if you needed to reference it or something. Look at, mm, I, I suppose. I know, but then you usually have screens in front of you if you're yeah. on a proper stage, I guess. But anyway, I don't know. I, I, in my use cases or in my situations I've, I've used it a couple times for that purpose because you didn't have mm -hmm. screens on stage to look at your presentation kind of thing but i wanted to not be in front of the computer for example right uh, and then finally i'm talking about this is more of a limitation than a feature uh but of course i guess a feature can be a limitation i guess right uh this <laughs> is going to limit the number of shared drives that a group can be added to to thirty thousand. Uh, so that is rolling out now to wrap release and schedule release domains on a bit of an extended rollout longer than 15 days for that and um, available to those that have access to shared drives so um, you know an extensive list of tiers that have that i think most of you should know who have shared drives by now mm -hmm. all right let's skip over that long list of uh SKUs then for that uh next uh, being able to uh, add line numbers to google docs so if you're you know, if you need to have line numbers, for example, like in uh, legal, say, uh, yeah, legal, um, you know, yep, in uh, try to think of the, court. the name of it, yeah, court report, um, which would be uh, transcripts, court transcripts, yes. for example, that have all the line items, uh, that line numbers on them, so that would be useful for that uh, use case. Uh, these are going to, you know, be added now to uh, Google Docs, and that feature can be. Added by heading to the tools, line numbers, and show line numbers uh, settings, and then you can kind of modify those as you need to. Uh, that is going to be rolling out to wrap release domain starting on the 24th of July 
on a gradual rollout up to 15 days for disability there. And then starting the 7th of August for scheduled release domains, also on a gradual rollout up to 15 days for visibility and available to everyone with workspace as well as personal Google accounts. So docs across the board, we'll see that. Uh, Why only in paged yeah. mode? Well, because, because why? I don't know. Uh, it kind of makes sense, so I think. Does it? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Especially because it says that it can be the entire document, a page, or a specific section. Yeah. So if it's not limited to the page or limited to the entire document, mm. and I could just do a couple of paragraphs or something to that effect. Yeah. True. Why is there still this break mm. in different types of different subsets of features available for I don't know. It seems yeah, pageless and patron. Hmm. Strange well, to me. Probably because I don't know, not because, but I bet anyone that's using this feature is used to page mode only on their like, used to pageless. Doesn't mean that, you know, those who know, are using page I lists I know. I, yeah. Yeah. Just seems odd well, that because, the limitation would even be there in the first place, I guess is what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, because most of the time if you're referring to lines, you're also referring to pages, right? You're not saying, oh, you know, line 23, it's, you know, page 3, line Maybe. so Because so. I, I bet, I wonder if it changes or resets every page, right? Does uh, it? Theoretically, that's what I was just wondering, but screenshot doesn't show enough of the page for me to see that. Well, it shows one page, right? But it does show... Not even. Well, I think it probably shows the top of the top of it, which is twelve. So, I think it probably which would is. mean it does not. So yeah, that's probably like you know page two, line twelve. Yeah, I, I don't know. know, but yes, yeah. One caveat to that is it is in page mode only, not pageless. All right. Uh, next uh, update here is the uh, ability to now import sensitive external files to Drive. Uh, with client-side encryption using the Drive API, and that's launching in beta. And uh, this is uh, available to those of you that want to take advantage of it uh, through a sign-up uh, of a form. So we will, you'll have that link. Uh, it's migrate to Drive CSE beta test application. You'll have to fill that out, uh, provide a little bit of information about you know who you're currently using for your service partner with encryption, uh, what are some kind of languages for, you know, your helper libraries if you're a developer and, you know, want to start to take advantage of this. Uh, so fill that out to get access and uh, start to play around with, with this new feature. It's, um, you know, once you get accepted to that page, there'll be some detailed instructions on how to use that Drive API to import those documents with uh, the CSE. And uh, that beta is kind of open now and accepting customers over the next several weeks. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, although we didn't see, I didn't see a, an update on the directory sync page uh, from like an update perspective there. This is, you know, an application here for, uh, for directory sync. I wonder if it's just the cloud sync here. Uh, an alternative, yeah, directory sync, alternative to the Google Cloud directory sync, GCDS, uh, of course, yeah, so GCDS is actually, uh, looks like it may not be getting it. So this is just directory sync to sync users from groups from Azure directory. Uh, and the update here is that it's, um, you know, kind of giving users and groups uh, the ability to sync there from Azure over to uh, Active Directory. Just looking at some, some more of the details here. There is Directory Sync is still in an open beta, and it's going to no sign up or registration required. Uh, but you can start to use that and take advantage of the new feature uh, pretty much right away. This started uh, like as it started last week on the 26th of July, and that was on a full rollout for rep release and schedule release domains on a pretty quick one to three day rollout for visibility on that one and available to everyone that's using Workspace and Cloud Identity. Uh, next, uh, second to last update that we have here is that ability to uh, disable submissions after a due date in Google Classroom. 
So this is following up on a previous announcement where uh, there were some grading periods in classroom uh, and there was some introduction of another feature that enabled teachers to customize grading in classrooms there. Uh, or this is kind of a, another feature here, sorry. And that is that ability to disable submissions after a due date. So you can stop accepting submissions for an assignment past that due date. And uh, you'll be able to decide whether or not to require a strict due date and set that when you're creating the assignment. I'm looking to see if there's any other interesting little caveats to this. Uh, but no, I think that is kind of the, the extent of that update. Uh, this one is rolling out uh, starting the 27th of July on a gradual rollout up to 15 days for visibility for both wrap release and schedule release domains and available to all workspace customers with personal, along with those with personal Google accounts as well. Which I guess, you know, it says all Google Workspace customers and users with personal Google, but you can't <laughs> create a classroom with a personal Google account and create an assignment, can you? They can they can join though, can they? But you can't I mean, you wouldn't have access to this feature if you're only a personal Google account and nothing else. You right. can't create assignments in class, you don't have access to classroom. I don't know. I actually don't use a at Gmail account ever. Well, yeah, I mean, you can, you can join classes and you might be able to be a, a teacher in a classroom on, with your Gmail account, but you just, you wouldn't Maybe. have access to this feature on just a personal Google account on its own. So not quite accurate on, on that, but if you are in education or workspace uh, with access to classroom as a tool, you'll have access to the assignment feature here and setting a date. All right. Uh, next that inline replies on uh, the announce in the announcement spaces uh, in Google chat is now available. So as we were saying earlier in the intro there, uh, if you are uh, taking advantage of a kind of announcement spaces and uh, you, you have certain people that can only post those announcements. Uh, this now gives you your non an, uh, announcers uh, the ability to respond to those posts. And this can, uh, you know, it looks like it can be enabled here or disabled uh, under permissions and reply to messages and you can just select all members or space managers only. And this is uh, rolling out uh, already to rep release domains uh, as of the 28th of July on uh, a gradual rollout up to 15 days for visibility there. And then schedule release domains, we'll see this starting a little bit later on the 14th of August, also on a gradual rollout to 15 days for visibility. Uh, that is for the web. And then mobile uh, users will see this. Uh, we'll have uh, we've started to see this already on the started on the 28th of July. Uh, also a gra uh, gradual rollout up to 15 days for visibility there. And that is for both rapid release and schedule release domains and all workspace customers uh, will see that. Uh, that is it uh, for the updates this week. Uh, talk about a couple items here, there in the news and, um, you know. Yep. It's all the published about next if we want. And yeah, I think I think we've I think we've done that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just just two then, if we'll leave out the next schmoozing yeah. um, as we covered that at the top of the show, and uh, I'm sure it won't be the last time we talk about it in the coming weeks. But uh, the next uh, event that we have here coming up is a deep dive into Google Workspace security, which should be fascinating. How to make safe and smart collaboration collaboration try that again a reality uh, by Kevin. A Podaka. Hopefully I got that right. Sorry, Kevin. Uh, interesting here, some, some um, interesting data in the description here. It says, despite how central it is to business success, security can often be seen as a detractor to productivity. 
Very true. With 37% of enterprise IT leaders and knowledge workers saying security and regulatory policies are the biggest challenge to an effective employee digital experience. And then goes on to talk about how Google Workspace can help with that. And join the session for a deep dive on workspace security features, live demos, Q&A, and the best practices, etc., etc. This is going to be on September 21st at 9 a.m. Pacific. That is 55-0 days from now um, over on YouTube. And you can hit the notification bell to notify me when... Uh, when this event is happening. Last but not least, um, pardon the expletives at the top of the show, I am very excited to say that I have an article from 9 to 5 Google that says a deeply committed Google, quote unquote, deeply committed, uh, their quotes, not mine, <laughs> Google working on, quote, unquote, supercharged assistant powered by LM, sorry, LLMs. I was going to say LMMs which is what I wrote in the notes. So, whoops, sorry about that. Uh, but Google announced apparently internally that it is in... Uh, yeah. Wow, where's my tongue tonight? Google announced internally that it is updating Google Assistant with the latest large language model technology, which had to happen. There was no world in which this didn't happen um, unless Google wanted to kill off Assistant entirely. So I'm glad that this is the case. They're not the only ones that are doing it. I'm sure Amazon is taking a long, hard look at their smart assistant. I'm sure Apple, who has been rumored to be playing with these language models, are also taking a long, hard look at Siri and how um, how they can supercharge their own. So this is the new battleground for smart assistants. The the you know the AI talk has finally gotten here, and uh, I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know if that's related to the reason why they decided not to roll out um, to their smart speakers. The what's that platform that they they've been rolling out? I'm blanking on the name for it right now. Um, magenta, not magenta. No, they switched the kernel to their custom OS. Um, custom OS for smart speakers. What the hell was it? And then they halt Fuchsia. Google abandons, this was five days ago, I guess this probably should have been in the news. Um, Google abandons Fuchsia plans for assistant smart speakers. And apparently there were a couple of speakers in the... Um, in the family here that were excluded from this, such as the little pucks, as well as the um, the the screenless. I think they were all basically the screenless speakers here. But for anyone who's been paying attention to that space, the um, the Google Home hubs have all been updated to the custom built Fuchsia OS. Not that anybody noticed because it just did a factory um, you know firmware update overnight, and the interface was, as far as I can tell, exactly the same. But Google appears to be hitting the brakes on the rollout. And I'm wondering if it has something to do with how they're rebuilding it around um, whatever this next generation is for uh, including LLMs. LLMs, yeah, it's a funny funny word. I just want to say M&Ms instead of LLMs. <laughs> um, but it's a, a very, very welcome update here. You've heard me talk about this in the past several weeks, several months, I guess, at this point, that all of the assistants are just dumb. They're just very, they've yeah. gotten inaccurate. They've gotten worse. They've gotten to the point where they, they give bad suggestions now as well. And it's just, I don't know, the cobwebs are showing. It's time to tear it down and uh, give it a, a, a supercharge, as they say in the headline here, uh, with this new incredible technology. As long as, well, I'd say as long as we can prevent it from hallucinating too much when it's responding to you, that would probably be not so great. All right, that's all I've got to say on that. Other than that is the Google Next Agenda is live. So once again, as we said many times throughout the show here, if you have not yet done that, go and fill out your agenda. That's cloud.withgoogle.com forward slash next or just Google search Google Next and it's the first thing to come up. That's all for this week. Uh, send us your questions and comments on Twitter. What's more? At the finish, let me know, please, anywhere you can, except Carrier Pigeon, if you would like to come to a dedicated Google Workspace networking event at Google Next. I need to know as soon as humanly possible. Please um, hit me up on threads, whatever, man. <laughs> Everywhere is fine. And uh, let me know that you would like to come so that I can get the people with the checkbooks who are interested in collaborating on such an event on board and let them know that there is real interest for this and we can find a space and make it happen. Um, hit, the, hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening. Thumbs up if you're over on YouTube. Five stars if you're not. Leave us a review, etc. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Workspace Recap.